Hey guys, Aaron here with uh, another fountain pen video. And um, I'm actually pretty excited about um, this fountain pen that I am showing today. Um, I just got it in the mail um, a couple days ago and um, I have not inked up the pen yet. Um, I how or have, however, um, cleaned and polished the pen, uh, polished up the nib and I used a uh, bulb syringe and flushed out the, the, the nib and feed unit. Um, so hopefully to allow the pen to perform um, the way, it's, way it should. Um, <clears throat> the pen that you see in front of you obviously is a Parker. And um, real quick, I'm gonna open it up to show the pen. And as you can see, it is a Parker Sonnet. Um, this pen here is actually a pen that is no longer in, uh, or this particular pen is no longer in production. Um, this is one of the original um, Parker sonnets that was offered when they started making these pens. And it was in production, for, this specific one was in production for about four years from 1994 to 1998. Um, Real quick, before um, I move on and talk just strictly about this pen, I want to talk about kind of the history of Parker Sonnet so far. Um, and in order to do that, you kind of have to talk about kind of how the pen came to be and why. Um, so starting really more or less in the 70s um, and 80s, um, Parker was really struggling as a pen company at the time. Um, and And in most part due to the fact that at the time um, people considered fountain pens to really be a fossil. Um, there wasn't really a great time for fountain pens in general, um, especially for companies that produce fountain pens. Um, however, at the time their number one selling pen was the Parker 75. Um, and for most of you that know anything about the 75, it kind of had a distinctive design, but, but very simple or, or simplistic as well. Um, but by 1990, the Parker 75 was closing in basically on its 20th um, year of being in production. And, you know, Parker basically decided that it was time to, to retire the old workhorse pen. And um, they really were looking at retiring several pens at that time that had been in production for multiple years, most being, um, 10 or more years. Um, so what Parker decided to do is they, they contacted a pen designer, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Hollington and asked him to come up with a fountain pen design that would be versatile and attractive enough to replace the Parker 75. So, um, in 1994, what came to be known as the Parker sonnet. So in 1994, the first line of Parker sonnets were uh, offered. Um, Parker's strategy was to offer the sonnet in several different designs priced accordingly so that one model could be offered in a wide price range. Um, for instance, there were four different nib style designs to be fitted on different price ranges. Um, the top line sonnets had an 18 karat gold two-tone nib highlighted with rhodium plating. Uh, and then the next level had a solid 18 karat gold nib. And then the third price range had a 23 karat gold plated stainless steel nib. And the lower price range or the fourth line were fitted with a regular stainless steel nib. So you can see that they really were trying to offer the pen to kind of meet the demands of, of several different um, price points. Um, when the pen was first introduced, it was offered in 18 different finishes. Uh, I thought that was something else that was kind of neat that really, you know, you had a lot of different, um, color varieties, uh, finishes, you had silver plating, gold plating. Um, you had these, uh, lac, lac, lac finishes like the one you see here. Um, and I thought that that was something that was kind of neat. Um, so the pen that you see in front of you is the, um, Parker Sonnet Lac Fire Dance. Um, it actually has a 23 karat gold plated body, um, with an 18 karat gold nib. Um, and you'll notice that this one has a thinner cap band, 
then the um, the upgraded version has a thicker cap pan. So this would be the second tier pen. Um, it's got a solid color, solded colored 18 karat nib, not the two tone nib. Um, an easy way to identify that two tone nib is it has a fatter cap band uh, right here. Um, so to kind of date this pen, um, you'll notice you have Parker Sonnet France and then you have that IL there. Um, so if I was dating this pen, um, we would be looking at the third quarter of 1994. Um, and if I didn't mention before, this pen was in production from, or this specific pen was in production from 1994 to 1998. So about, about four years. And so this would have been, um, really one of the original pens that was offered in the, the Parker Sonnet line. Um, some other cool, um, key notes about this pen, um, I did get this pen off of eBay. Um, I got it for uh, a little under $80. Um, and it came from a seller that I have bought from before, and um, they acquired the pen from an estate sale. Now, from what they could tell, the pen had never been inked, and when I cleaned it out, um, I, I found no remnants of ink in the converter or in the feed or the nib or really anywhere, and to me, it looks like it has, in, in fact, never been inked. Um, I did clean the pen up just a little bit, I think it was probably uh, the state. I know the state sale they got it from came with several pens. So I, this was definitely a collector. I have a feeling they probably collected this pen, left it inside its box for probably many years. Um, so it it did need just a little bit of, of polishing. Um, I polished it up and you put a little bit of Renaissance wax on it. And just to kind of help with uh, uh, fingerprints and also to help protect the uh, body itself. Um, so today, um, Parker is still has the Sonnet in production and it's still a very popular pen. If you look on Parker's website, you can see that the pens are offered in several different price ranges. Um, the cheapest, I mean, you can find them as low as I've seen $80.00. Um, for some of their lower lines, and I've seen them at, at, as high as $370 on um, current models of Parker Sonnet. Um, so the pen itself, um, when it's capped, is about five and, and one quarters capped, um, or five and one quarter inches. When it's uncapped, it's four and three quarter inches. And when it's posted, it's about five and three quarters inches posted. The pen does post very deeply. Um, and, you know, looking at the pen, you've got, of course, your traditional Parker arrow clip here. Um, the top of the pen, you've got your kind of, to me, that signature Parker jewel as well, like a lot of Parker fountain pens have. Um, <clears throat> you've got a definitely, you've got your uh, clip band there, as you can tell, or the piece that kind of holds that jewel down to the uh, cap itself. And then moving down the um, cap, you've got your thin cap band here. And then again, you've got that information there, Parker Sonnet France, and then their date coding system IL. And then moving down the barrel, it's just all one piece. Um, and then you've got another jewel that is set in side of the barrel, which I think is kind of neat, um, almost looks like an eye, so to speak. Um, I think that's kind of uh, cool. Um, <clears throat> one thing about this pen, I really, one of the things that really drove me to this pen was the, um, the color, just the pattern and everything I thought was really neat. Um, again, this is the fire dance. Um, and, um, I think it's cool because, you know, this is a metal fountain pen and it is a pop off cap. So again, it's metal. You can hear it there. So this is a pen that is very sturdy, but even though it's metal, um, because it's a thinner pen, um, it's not very heavy at all. Um, it is a pen to me that you can use unposted. You've got a really long um, section here, so you can hold it in several different points. You don't have to worry about um, uh, threads or anything digging into your fingers. That's another nice thing about it. 
Now, if you are someone that likes to post pins, it posts really deeply and very securely. Um, and for where it sits in my hand, it doesn't feel really back heavy, but I think if you're someone that if it sits farther back, I definitely think it could be a little bit back heavy, partially probably due to the clip and just the additional metal in the cap. Um, so, you know, as far as the pin, you know, that's the entire body. And then again, looking at the nib, you'll notice you've got that nib with the scroll work design on top. It says Parker 18K. Um, and then you have your 750 down on the bottom right corner. And then you'll notice you've got your Parker Aero um, design into the bottom uh, left corner there. So the nib is, uh, I think, you know, it, it, it's understated, but I think, you know, it goes really well with the pen itself. Um, now, taking off the barrel again, all metal, this is the converter that it came with. Um, which I thought was kind of cool, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know, this is one thing that I was surprised when I took this off because I thought, and I could be wrong in stating this, and if, if somebody correct me in the comments, that these original Parkers had more of a, a pull-up converter, um, and this is more of the um, updated converter. So that also could tell me maybe this pin has actually been used. Um, and, and, you know, if it was the person that did own and use this pin, definitely took very good care of it, of it cleaned it out very well. Um, again, I haven't inked it yet, but I think based off of what I've seen so far, um, I think it will be fine. Um, converter works very well. Um, I don't see any issues with it at all. Um, Really, that is it about the pen. Um, so I haven't inked it yet, but just just for me, you know, one of the things for me for the pen that I, I, I mean, I enjoy Parker fountain pens. Um, Parker and Waterman are, are two of my, my kind of favorite fountain pen manufacturers, especially from a vintage perspective. Um, and they both are, are so drastically different. Um but this one I, I really like because I think it's going to be a great pen that I can take with me um, to take notes on because it, it is not a twist off cap. Um, it will fit very, very well in a shirt pocket um, because of its overall size and length. And I think the weight of it will be perfect um, to take to meetings. Now, I know this is a collectible type pen in a way, but for me, a, a fountain pen is... Um, still a tool. And as much as I love collecting them, I also love using them. So this will definitely be a pen, if it writes well, that will be used um, quite regularly. Um, real quick, we'll do a sizing comparison. So we've got our Parker Sonnet here. We've got our Pilot Metropolitan that is, you can tell is a little bit longer and girthier. And then you've got your Lamy Safari. Um, so you'll notice that this is by no means a very large pen at all. Um, but I think it, to me, it, it's a well-sized fountain pen. So I definitely think that it's a pen that based off of the what you need it for, what I feel like I need it for, that will work very well. Um, so I'm going to ink it up um, real quick and the fountain pen ink that I'm going to use. Um, I don't have any Parker ink, or I do, but they are all in cartridges. So I was gonna go with this Waterman Audacious Red. Um, so I'm gonna ink it up off camera, guys, and then we'll do a writing sample and see how the pen performs. I'll be back in a moment. All right, guys, we are back. And uh, real quick, I'm gonna zoom in some more, kind of get a little bit closer. All right, one thing um, when I was looking at the pen um, and I remembered from watching a, another reviewer that you've got an M on the back of that feed, which um, should indicate that this is a medium nib. Um, so let's see how she writes. So again, this is the Parker Sonnet. 
And this is the fire dance model. Um, and the pen was produced 1994. And this is a medium nib. So, so far, pretty good. And, it, you know, I'd say it's a, a, f a fairly wet rider. Um, and so let's see the overall riding sample real quick. So the quick brown fox. Um, pin gives a little bit of a, uh, a little bit feedback. Um, you know, it's not the, the smoothest pen I've ever used, but it's definitely not um, something that is very bothersome. But one thing I will say is the pen definitely has um, some bounce to it. Um, you know, it it's springy, definitely springy. Um, you know, as far as line variations, there's no pressure, so you can you know, you can squeeze out a little bit of line variation there. And I mean, it, it offers a, an interesting writing experience because like I said, it's a little bit bouncy, which you don't really, you don't really expect that to be with a Parker fountain pen. You don't expect the pen to be um, bouncy or springy. You usually are expecting a nail um, like most Parker's. Um, so I think the fact that this one being a model that, you know, around 1994, um, and the fact that the nib has some, uh, springiness to it, I, I think it's really kind of cool. Um, I like it. Um, I mean, I think the nib, or I'm sorry, I think the nib works very well. Um, that feed definitely does a great job. It's a feed I've seen on other Parker pins, of course. Um, so this pen to me is, I, I, I like it a lot. So as far as anything I don't like about it, um, I can't really, you know, think of anything. Uh, one thing, I guess one thing I would say is, is that the, um, so the cap obviously snap, it's a snap on cap. And I've noticed, um, just when using it that sometimes if I'm not paying attention, if I turn the pen, because in my mind, I think every pen I own is a twist off cap because that's mostly what I use, that the um, the barrel and section will sometimes come a little bit loose. Um, and I mean, to me, that's just kind of nitpicking, but it is something that could be a little bit of an annoyance. Um, part of that is just me not being used to using a snap off cap. Um, all the other pins I have inked up right now are twist off caps. I don't think I have any that are inked up that are uh, snap caps. Um, so guys, really that's it for this review. Um, this is a pin that's really cool. Um, you know, comment down below if, if you own a Parker Sonnet about your experiences with it and what you think about it. And also um, when you uh, acquired it or, or what year it was uh, produced. Um, I think if this is a pen that you're thinking about getting. Um, I think you could be really surprised um, on the performance. You know, it would be interesting to know how the steel nibs um, perform. I mean, they're Parker nibs. So I'm sure they're going to perform fine, but it would be kind of cool to see how the steel nib performs on these pens um, being at a, a lesser price point. Um, but I really like the pen. I love the color of it. Um, and I think it's a pen that's going to bring me enjoyment for, um, uh, many years to come. So, uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, obviously give me a, a thumbs up, um, subscribe if you haven't done that already, and then comment down below on what you guys think about the, the pen and, and everything else. I hope everyone has a wonderful, uh, morning, evening, weekend, or weekday, whatever time of week it is, and I shall see you guys later. Bye-bye.